I'll move on to the whips have agreed that paragraph two of report number one, council tax and budget for 2017-18 will be taken next. I now move reception of that report. There is proposed additional wording to the recommendations. Can I ask Councillor Senior and Councillor Govindia to formally move and second that? And formally second it, Ms. Mayor. Thank you. Can I also ask Councillors Carpenter and Hogg to move and second the circulated amendment in their names? Formally moved. And formally seconded. Thank you. We carry on with speakers. Councillor Senior. we do set the council tax, but as Councillor Belton uh, frequently reminds us, the amount we charge in council tax is relatively low compared to our overall budget. We're talking as a figure of somewhere in excess of £50 million compared to an overall budget that we spend, uh, including uh, contingencies this year, of £910 million. So it is a relatively small figure. And what we're actually doing tonight, following on from our discussions at the last council meeting fixing the capital budget, is to fix our overall budget uh, for the council for this year. So it's not just the council tax, important though that is, it's the money we are spending on behalf of our third of a million residents, and a very substantial sum of money uh, that is too. And of course today, rather unusually, I, don't, I can't recall when it last happened, it may have happened before, today we have a national budget occurring on the same day that the council itself is setting its own budget. And it might be worth having a little look, particularly in view of some of the questions that have been asked earlier on, and how our budget and how the national budget varies. Nationally, we have a government absolutely rightly trying to balance the budget, gradually bring, bringing down the deficit, but not getting there, and having very little in reserves. In our case, we have to balance the budget, and rightly so. And if we do have, uh, from time to time, issues in balancing the budget, then we have substantial reserves that enable us to balance the budget year on year, because we fix the roof, as it was said, when the sun is shining, unlike national governments. And at the same time, and extremely importantly, we are charging our residents a low rate of tax. And I do not apologise for that in any way, shape or form, because I think that is right. We are at the moment a government, because of the enormous deficit, because of the spendings I alluded to at the last council meeting, frankly, is a proportion of national income more than is sustainable. Uh, it is actually, regretfully in my point of view, one of the highest taxing governments ever. Now, perhaps the Labour Party approve of that, perhaps they don't. I don't particularly approve it, it is necessary, but it is unfortunate. Here on this council, we believe in charging a low tax, and rightly so. And why is that rightly so? It is because that helps those people who are, yes, to use the cliché, just about managing. Those people who don't uh, get benefits, uh, those people who are not desperately well off, so it doesn't really matter how much the tax is, uh, but who are at the margins, and who, for whom the council tax does matter. And let's face it, the difference now, we still have the lowest average council tax in the country. The council tax I will pay, the council tax that someone will pay 100 yards from my front door in Lambeth will be twice as much, and for services which are considerably worse. In this borough, we believe in producing good services at a good price. I am confident that our £910 million budget this year will be properly spent. And I am also confident that we will be charging the people of this borough a good 
a price for it. Now let's briefly go on to the Labour Party amendment. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what is said about it, but as we repeatedly said, although I have some sympathy with some of the things that Councillor Carpenter and his colleagues have been say, saying about trying to make better use of our reserves, we are limited by the, gui the guidance set out uh, by central government and the importance that it is of retaining that capital rather than in losing it. There are many local authorities that came extremely close to losing money and would have lost money were they not bailed out by central government when they invested in Icelandic banks. We did not do that. Uh, long ago, there are other local authorities who lost large sums of money in the swaps markets and were bailed out again uh, by central government. We did not do that. This council is a prudent and sensible authority which runs its, which runs its finances in a prudent and sensible way. Long may that continue, the budget is what the budget is, and I commend it to the Council. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Carpenter. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Mr Mayor, today is uh, Budget Day. Uh, what does the Chancellor propose to do for Wandsworth in his budget? Well, hopefully, we will get uh, a share of the two billion that he's put aside for adult social care over the next three years. If that's allocated on a pro rata to population basis, and I searched all the, the budget documents online and couldn't find any method of allocation to put, put there, uh, we would get about 10 million pounds over the three years. So not a vast amount of money, but certainly a help. So I don't think we can look to central government to resolve our long-term budgetary problems. We have to look to our own resources. And know our amendment says Wandsworth has very significant financial resources, over half a billion pounds in the bank. Now currently we're earning a return of around 1%, 5 million pounds a year on that money. Half the Bank of England's target rate of inflation of 2%. In other words, in real terms, every year we're losing 1% per annum, 5 million pounds of Wandsworth Council taxpayers' hard-earned money. By contrast, the Wandsworth and Richmond Pension Fund is currently making a return of over 6% on the £2 billion it has invested, well above inflation and well above the return required to fully fund Wandsworth and Richmond's pensions. Now, I'm not suggesting that we should target a 6% return on our cash balances because these are shorter term investments compared to the long term investments of the pension fund. But we should at least be able to match the 2% long term inflation target. If we can't do that, then we might as well return the money to our council taxpayers who would make better use of it. Mr. Mayor, I'm reminded of the parable of the talents, where our Lord said, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, we can deploy Wandsworth's considerable financial resources to generate additional revenue. How do we propose to invest these funds? I would suggest that our proposals are in the nature of a spent and to save scheme, where investment today produces dividends tomorrow. My colleagues will go into more detail on the proposals in our amendment. But in essence, they are all targeted at improving the outcomes for Wandsworth residents and reducing expenditure in the long term. Mr Mayor, we have long argued for the introduction of the London living wage across Wandsworth. And I'm pleased that the majority party has accepted our arguments in respect of its directly employed workforce. But the fact that a function happens to be contracted out does nothing to lessen the argument for the London living wage. Repeated studies have shown that introducing the London living wage reduces staff turnover and absenteeism, so reducing recruitment and training costs, and over time pays for itself. We are proposing to begin the process of rolling out the London living wage to all our contracted out staff, with the staff working on the Council's social care contracts first, as these are under the most pressure. Similarly, in housing, we currently face the ridiculous situation where to provide temporary accommodation, 
we are leasing back our own housing stock, which has previously been sold off under the right to buy scheme, at grossly inflated rentals, compared with our own costs of providing social housing directly. We have the opportunity, through the Alton and York Road Wind Stanley regeneration schemes, to deploy some of our housing revenue account balances to increase the number of social housing units. So both reducing the long-term cost of providing temporary accommodation for homeless families and shortening our social housing queues. Mr. Mayor, in our amendment, we have put forward sensible proposals to raise additional revenues through prudent investments of our cash balances and to deploy these funds to invest in improvements which in the long term will both benefit the residents of Wandsworth and reduce some of the pressures on our budgets. I urge all members to support the amendment. Thank you. Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, oh, what a joyous day. Um, Brexit was um, a surprise, as was the election of uh, President Donald Trump. But never in my wildest dreams did I think the principal Labour response to our council tax and budget motion would be that we don't have an aggressive enough fund management strategy. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm delighted that times are uh, are changing. I, I have the greatest of respect for Councillor uh, Car Carpenter, who sits on um, pensions with me and his financial literacy. So I can only assume that he intends these amendments today to be a form of sort of drafted placard, um, because that would certainly be a more appropriate place for them, as Councillor Cook has already set out in, 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 in detail. It's, it's certainly not in the budget. He will know that hypothecation doesn't work. My colleagues will pick up the various strands uh, of, of, of the amendment motion, but I just want to pick up on, on two particular points. The first is the actual principal um, fundraising paragraph. I think it is important to say, in addition to the budget is the budget, is that um, we are a council and not an investment fund. And I, I think one does have to question the legality, actually, of what is being proposed. We are constrained not only by our own Treasury management policy, but also by the Local Government Act, where we have to have a very clear priority on security and liquidity and not on yield. And I think it's fair to say that we have already tried to address, address better investment very clearly in paper 1796 and, and, and in particular through um, paragraph 17, but, it, but in a way which still preserves the, uh, a more appropriate use of our reserves. So really, I think you know, what, what's being proposed at the beginning of this amendment is a kind of motion for alchemy. And, and I, you know, I don't think you know, even we in Wandsworth would, would claim to be able to, to achieve that. So, so I mean, that's my, that's my first point that of, of objection. The, the second, then, looking through the, the, the various um, sort of shopping list items, I, I would pick up from my own work on community services a, a slight surprise that, that environment has been included in the way it is, because I think it's something where we have already shown um, you know, real sort of endeavor and a le and leading role. Members of, of that committee will know that we've only just um, published a, um, an air quality action plan in 2016. Um, when it comes to other efforts such as car club membership, we are again leading in London with 14,000 residents. Signed up, we're signed up with four different car club operators. And also th those in Putney will know of the work that has been progressed in ensuring that the high street there will be included as one of the 12 emission zones for low emission buses. And indeed, actually, if we're going to look at the environment, those opposite will be aware that 6% of the vehicle mi miles of HGVs and buses account for 48% or sorry, of, uh, of, of nitrogen oxide emissions. So if, if you really want impact there, they, they perhaps should be looking to their own mayor, uh, uh, Sadiq, um, to, to, come up with, to come up with a way of funding that from, from, from his budget. Maybe he could use the, the, Olympic, um, the Olympic precept if he hadn't already spent it. So I'm, I'm slightly surprised to see the environment elements of that. Um, so I mean, go, going back to, I think, the, the principal motion, I, I think it's important, and, and it's really the, the, the key point I want to make today, to, to look at what we are at this budget, really in the context in which we are living and operating. Because we are living in a time of change for local government financing with 
huge amount of devolved power and responsibility to councils, with every council self-financing by 2020, such that the hallmark really of a successful council will be one of accountability, efficiency and innovation. And I think that's what this budget tries to do in, in recognising the adaptability required. I mean, we, you will see that it is through our efficiency plans that we've been able to agree a settlement right through to 2020 to give us greater certainty. I mean, indeed, you know, in, it, uh, there's been a lot of attention in the press very recently about the business rates um, revaluation. That's something we have continued to do work on. We, we've actually had a reserve in place since 2011-12 to deal with business rates volatility because of, 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 this, of this planned issue. So efficiency is something we've worked on. Innovation, I'm sure others will talk about. We have spoken many times before about our innovation through shared services and the savings that will bring our work on homes and the new homes bonus which is generated from it and shows heavily in the budget. Not to mention the work in regenerating our town centres and making this a place where, where businesses are, are welcome. So innovation is already a hallmark of, of what we do in Wandsworth. And lastly, and most fundamentally, accountability. And it's, it's our accountability through continued low affordable council tax. And that's a council tax which helps those who are the poorest the most. It's for that reason that I commend the motion to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Carry on. Councillor Hampton. Right. Right. So, you perhaps don't like what I'm saying, but you could at least have the courtesy to listen to me. The Labour Party endlessly complain, but when will they explain? So tonight, I throw down the gauntlet and I challenge you to tell the people of Wandsworth exactly how you would spend their money. The least that they can expect is a detailed and costed budget from you so that residents can understand the very real consequences of the choices made in the ballot next year. The Labour Party love talking about Merton. They see it and hold it in high esteem. Well, I lived in. Well, you're doing F cross. I lived in. On the point of. Uh, well, can I interrupt, Mr. Mayor? Can, can, no. Can, can absolutely not. Can you point to one example of us referring to Merton in a, that kind of way? Actually. Quiet, well, please. Can, sorry, can we just stop a sec? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you wish to give way to his comment? Okay, we have to carry on. Carry on. I Thank you. Just swap them over. Right. Okay, defective equipment. Right. So, Wandsworth. Carry on. No, no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Gracious. Thank you. Every grown ups. Right. So, Band D, £700, Wandsworth, Merton, £1,450. But the actual amount only tells part of the story. In Merton, what do you get for double the council tax? Well, they're overspending by six million this year, dipping into reserves to add a sticking plaster to the black hole of fiscal improvements. I look at the, t the tweets. There are so many problems in Merton about rubbish. So I'm a bit surprised that for such a high council tax levy that next year weekly refuse collections will go down to once every two weeks. Not to mention the vanity project and the expensive wheeling bins. The Labour-run borough of Camden is again double our council tax, but on the 1st of April it will be bins every two weeks. And why are you laughing? Actually, I'm a taxpayer, I care about my refuse collection, and I'm very sorry that the Labour group think it's a joke. There we go, let's put that down. Our financial stability is not something that magically happened overnight, but through years of hard work and prudence. 
Some people may say, well, yes, I'll, I'll pay some more. But I remember Councillor Jane Cooper telling me many years ago, well, that's all very well. But what about my residents on the Ashburton estate? They appreciate the value of excellent council services for less. Let's turn to... I don't know why you think this is so funny. <laughs> really? This is something serious that we're talking about, so stop mucking about. Honestly, like a bunch of kids. Right. Um, Mr. Mayor, I've been so interrupted and I haven't finished. Can I, may I carry on within my carry time? On. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I Mayor, want point to of turn order. Point to order. Labour's amendments. Okay? One minute. The increasing, so we ask for increasing returns. Look at 2008, the disaster of the Icelandic banks. A billion pounds that the client council assets, Labour run Haringey, 37 million trapped in assets. The superstar salesman of Singer and Freelander and their like tempting greed of the fast buck on usually high returns. This can never happen again, and government stopped it in order to hamper short-term gain for increased risk. Let's look at the rest of the shopping list. Hmm. Money used to get, out more voluntary, get more out of the voluntary sector. But I chair the Grants Committee, and we're doing great work engaging with other funders and developers, adding value, not cost. <coughs> We move on to the specific wish list of the social housing play facilities. But let's pause and look at what we've actually currently achieved. The real and tangible benefits of good management have allowed this conservative-led council to regenerate the Alton and Winstanley estates. Can you find out, this Councillor Hampton? Um, you've oh, had, uh, can I minutes. remind you? Yep. Can I? Shh, You've had your extra. It's bringing benefits. Can I remind you that this side of the chamber takes great pride in the serving not just some but all of our residents? This is the conservative way, the Wandsworth way. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Thomas. Point of 
personal explanation. Point of personal explanation. Um, actually, I think it's quite relevant, as I'm a woman who runs a business in Wandsworth, and I actually find that incredibly insulting. I run an insurance broking business, I sit on FCOS, I am numerately literate. Maybe not always uh, well, literate because I'm dyslexic. I take exception to what you've just said. Uh, I don't think you were too uh, polite about uh, his uh, financial capability, but. I apologise for any offence caused. <laughs> so already, neither, nearly half of the councils in London are in the process of increasing minimum pay rates to the London living wage for all of their contractors. So it can be done. Ultimately, it boils down to a matter of moral principle and political will. It's just not fair on our residents that we should go on putting up with services provided on the cheap residents who could be yours or my mum or dad, brother or sister. It's not fair either on the staff that work in them. And since we're mentioning International Women's Day, let's actually just recall that the vast majority of these staff happen to be women. And it doesn't even make good economic sense. This council, and we've heard something about failures of leadership in uh, 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 the uh, detour that we took on uh, Sadiq Khan, uh, this council needs to uh, uh, start at home uh, leading by example and showing some leadership. How can the party opposite credibly go around urging employers in the private sector to adopt the London living wage, as uh, Boris Johnson was fond of doing, when it won't even do so for the services that it controls? And how can it maintain that it wants to abolish poverty pay and to end the cycle of low skills and low productivity, and we're hearing a lot you know, from the Prime Minister and the Chancellor about that at the moment, when it continues to perpetuate these very things at local level here in Wandsworth. Mr Mayor, the Chancellor's budget today contained a belated recognition that when it comes to the pressures in social care, doing nothing is no longer an option. The extra funding for social care announced won't make a huge difference, but it does give us a bit more wiggle room. So actually, the budget uh, that we've got isn't quite the budget that was. And so I urge Councillor Senior, Councillor Madden and Councillor Convidia to recognise that their do-nothing approach must end uh, now and to give the firm commitment today that uh, this council will adopt the London living wage as a condition of all of its social care contracts on a phased basis if necessary. I ask you to support our amendment for two reasons because it's the right thing to do, and because it can indeed be done. Councillor McCausland. Mr Mayor, I welcome the Chancellor's news today of an extra £2 billion for social care, a boost for the Council's budgets uh, in reducing bed blocking and funding improvements to the delivery of social services. I belatedly welcome the SFA fixed term agreement between the Council and the Government on the amount of business rates the Council will keep each year until 2020. The proposed date for the full localisation of business rates. 2020 will surely be welcomed in enterprise minded boroughs like Wandsworth, but probably less so in other ones. And I welcome Wandsworth's decision to set the lowest council, average council tax in the country. No news there, but widely welcomed in the borough, of course, once again. Average, quote unquote, because the band D level, as the crude indicator of affordability between council rates set by each local authority, is widely used, but extremely crude. Wandsworth is seldom average in anything, but in this case, Westminster has few band D council taxpayers relative to the higher band households and therefore masquerades misleadingly as home to the lowest council tax. But anyone who thinks that the man or woman on the Clapham omnibus is perfectly happy to pay more council tax hasn't listened to them. Yes, council tax bans could be more progressive and there's certainly room for some reform. But there is rampant among the so-called progressives an ever-increasing obsession with the definition of social equality which positively discourages 
people from feeling better off because somebody else is probably doing even better and that shouldn't be allowed. This is a mindset which denies incentive and ambition and ultimately can destroy economic progress. It is therefore counterproductive for everybody. Yes, we need community centres which can be used by residents of all ages. The more state of the art, the better. Yes, there's certainly a balance to strike between keeping the fruits of your own efforts and contributing to a wider community and not just your own family. But the politics of envy is no way to run a borough, a city or a country. We will win the borough elections next year. I urge you to support the motion and to reject the uncosted wish list put forward as an amendment by the minority group. <laughs> Councillor Mrs Leonie Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Well, sadly for Councillor McCausland, it is entirely costed, and uh, Councillor Carpenter set out in his initial speech um, where the additional funding would be coming from. But if you actually look at the uh, wish list that is uh, contained within our motion, compared to the overall size of our budget, which Councillor Senior referred to in his um, initial remarks, 900 million, um, this is only a very, very tiny amount of money that we're talking about spending, just uh, £2 million on these items and in particular I think we've just had a very eloquent speech from Councillor Thomas on why it is morally correct for us to be tackling some of these very urgent issues which are not just an issue for this council they're an issue for councils across this country and indeed have been the subject of debate in the House of Commons uh, and some councils appear to be giving be, being given rather special treatment um, but there are councils everywhere who need assistance in those areas and councils Councillor Thomas has just set out and why would anybody in this room or anywhere else in the whole of this borough want somebody that they've never met before turning up each day of the week? Continuity of care is absolutely critical. My mother had personal care provided when she lived in Wandsworth and when she lived in Hertfordshire. And it, it is really intrusive to have a string of strangers coming into your house, taking your clothes off, helping you with the things that you find difficult. And I think we would all endorse what Councillor Thomas was saying. And that's why we feel some uh, extra focus has to be given to the wages uh, of the people who undertake these activities. But in terms of the environmental um, proposals, we're not suggesting in any size, shape or form that um, the Air Quality Action Plan isn't a good starting place. And I do resent really what Councillor O'Brien was suggesting, that we're saying that there's some sort of blank sheet of paper. We're not saying it's a blank canvas. What we are saying is that we are a council that could be doing so much more and it is about political choices we are talking about a very small amount of money about half a million pounds to be spent on green initiatives if we look at what Islington has done with their shine initiative which takes fuel poverty advice to specifically the people who need it it is no good us saying oh our council tax is low when we also know that what we charge for our services is amongst the highest in the country what we charge for our rents is the highest in the country. And on top of that, people facing extremely high energy bills. So getting to the right people, going to talk to the right people, insulating their properties and making sure that they understand that there are things that they can personally do to reduce their bills. Those are the things that we're suggesting um, as part of our environmental package. And that sits on top of what this council has already decided to do. It's not an either or. It's not saying that there's nothing um, going on. And, and if you look at the amount of money that we are saying that we would want to spend on that and also on children's play it comes to £700,000, £500,000 on the environmental initiatives and £200,000 on the play equipment. 
And I just hold up the Nine Elms Pimlico brochure that I've received. We spent £200,000 on architects for a competition for a bridge that at the moment the people on the other side of the river, the uh, city of Westminster, have not yet agreed that the bridge can go across. And I'm now looking at a very nice uh, but somewhat complex, and I can't quite imagine riding a bicycle up that swirling um, entrance and exit on both ends. And our budget this year for this is £500,000. Pounds. By a complete coincidence, that amount of money that we, you, have decided to spend just on this one project is identical to the amount of money that we're saying would benefit people who are living sometimes just about managing, sometimes inches away from the poverty line. So it's not just about keeping the council tax down. It's not just about um, addressing the needs of people who might want to use a bridge. It's also looking at the play facilities, the care facilities, and the environmental considerations that will help people bring their bills under control. I commend our amendment to you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Caddy. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. As we've already heard, the Council's budget is huge. We've got responsibility for millions and millions of pounds of taxpayers' money. And we need to make sure that we spend it wisely and in the best interests of our residents. And we also need to make sure that we reflect the promises that we made to our voters when they elected us. And I just want to pick out a couple of examples where we've done that. First of all, I also want to talk a bit about council tax. We've got the lowest average council tax in the country. And I realise that the opposition might point out that with the referendum limit, obviously boroughs now have less control over setting their council tax. But actually, this low tax is reflective of years of prudent management and respect for taxpayers' money. As Councillor Hampton's pointed out, Mrs Smith in a band D house in Southfields on one side of Revelstoke Road, Road pays £700 and on the other side she'd pay £1,400. It's actually £715 extra in your pocket to spend on what you choose or putting it another way, if you're on the London living wage, it's about 73 hours of work. So that's nearly two weeks. It's a huge amount. And that's not just the case this year, that's been the case over years and years. Since 1992, when council tax first came in, Mrs Smith would have paid nearly £14,000 less. Just imagine if she'd invested that money, she would have had a nice little nest egg. Although perhaps not if she'd asked Councillor Carpenter for investment advice. So one would imagine that our services and our facilities and our, our playgrounds might be half as good as those of, say, Merton or Lambeth. Well, not from the feedback I get. The feedback I get is that our services are better. I hear it all the time, we saw a lovely flat the other day, um, but it was just across the border and I want to live in Wandsworth. I hear that a lot, but I accept that that might be anecdotal. The hard evidence shows that our schools are top class, none of our housing stock is below the decent home standard, and our residents have a very high satisfaction level. The second point I want to make is um, I want to talk about the great work that's been going on during Wandsworth Enterprise Week this week. The EDO have done a brilliant job of, of organising networking events, training sessions and one-to-one -one advice clinics and speakers. And on International Women's Day, I think it's worth pointing out that well over half the entrepreneurs in the room when I attended the Virgin Startup session were women. And the win winner of the ones with Dragon's Den was also a woman. Today I was at Women's Enterprise Day and we talked about being bold for change and had Maria Kempinska, the founder of John Glers, telling, her, telling us about her experiences. Over the week so far, I've spoken to lots of the entrepreneurs, speakers and advisors, and many of them work with other boroughs on projects as well, and they really did talk about how they hadn't seen anywhere that was as supportive of small business as Wandsworth, and this really is a credit to our EDO. And it also reflects the commitment that this administration made to support businesses and our town centres as part of our strategy for the borough. To close, I just want to quickly comment on the opposition's amendment. I was really hoping that they might present an alternative budget so that we could see the detailed effect of their suggestions. But unfortunately, we just had a few headlines with very little detail on what they might cost or what the risks might be. I couldn't see any evidence that they share our bold vision for a borough of opportunity and aspiration. So I'd urge you all to vote against the amendment and support the budget paper. Thank you, Councillor Hogg. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think this budget is a serious piece of work and we congratulate all the officers involved 
and of course particularly Mr. Buss, um, I'd like to lay out the Labour alternative. Um, Labour will make better use of one's worth significant financial resources and will invest it for the long-term benefit of local people. More affordable housing, uh, better care for older people and more facilities for children will create a digitally switched on low carbon council that pays every worker a fair wage. And we'll do this by keeping in low council tax. As Councillor Carpenter explains, the council has hundreds of millions of pounds in the bank. Um, we're earning about 1% interest below inflation. So as noted earlier, we've got half a billion pounds and we're actually managing to lose money. That's, that's an extraordinary achievement. By cautiously increasing returns on a portion of our general fund balances, we've demonstrated how we can achieve an extra two million pounds in the coming year. This money will be invested for the long-term benefit of local people. We'll prioritise five key areas. We'll introduce the London Living Wage for all staff working on the council's social care contracts. We'll invest to develop additional right, capacity yeah, yeah, in the voluntary sector. We'll introduce environmental schemes on emissions, renewables, fuel poverty. Oh, excuse me, could, we'll would you take an intervention? Um, I, you'll allow it's me, it's a polite question, it's not a... I, I think um, I'm, I've got the general gist that people would like to see the Labour alternative, and I think I, I won't I just wanted to forward, ask a question. I, I've answered the Would you, uh, would you give way? No, no. You won't give way. Okay. Sorry. We'll improve children's okay, play facilities. And we'll increase by 100 the number of social housing units on the Alton and Winstanley estate regeneration schemes. These measures have been fully costed, and the initial outlay will be repaid over time by reduced costs. And I want to emphasise we can achieve all of this while keeping council tax low. Council tax is unfair. It hurts older people, renters, and those on low incomes. We should try to keep it as low as we can. Mm. It really is unfair. I mean, I, I give an example of two of my constituents with uh, a security guard. His net income, council tax is 5 or 6% of his income, and his near neighbour, a solicitor, it's 1% of his income. It, it's a completely unfair tax. And if you want to pay for services by increasing council tax, you're just making low-income people pay for those services. And, of course, it doesn't actually raise that much extra revenue. I think, as Councillor Senior points out, it's around 6% of the budget. So even if you're increasing it, you're not raising that much extra revenue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna we will vote for the 3.99% increase in council tax this evening. But before I conclude, I'd just like to touch on the Tory record, this uh, myth that the council is uniquely skilled at finance. I mean, we, we can certainly com complement their brass neck, you know, trumpeting this budget that will spend £20 million more than it will bring in. Uh, Wandsworth Tories are not great with money. I mean, you, imp you pulled an impressive, genuinely impressive, low-tax trick 27 years ago, and you're still living on the embers of that stunt. We should remember the political failures that have had a large impact in this budget. An Ofsted inspection uncovered serious failures in children's services. £14 million of public money has been earmarked to set right those failings. Now, this is just one year's budget we're discussing, but I think tonight we've seen differences in approach. And I think as we go through the year and we lay out our policies, our prospectus for the people in 2018, we'll see those uh, divisions more starkly. Because to me, the, cons the Tory vision is narrow. It's conservative. Um, you're just taking what we have now and cutting it away one slice at a time. And at the end of this approach, you're just left as the property developer's best friend who can't even keep the streets clean. In contrast, Labour's council will be digital, it will be open and low carbon. It will listen and it will be family friendly. Overall, it will be a more activist council using the powers of local government to improve local people's lives. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Govindia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Councillor Hogg promised that uh, this was going to be an alternative budget and I sort of struggled to find one in that list of cliches and uh, wish lists. <laughs> Let's examine whether this council is good at uh, money management. By their own record, they say we have 500 million pounds in the bank. 
Well, to amass 500 million pounds in the bank does require a certain amount of financial acumen, I'd have thought. <laughs> and if our financial acumen was not pretty good, then I wonder how you can actually get 500 million pounds in the bank. <laughs> the other thing is that, in fact, when you look at what uh, Councillor Carpenter and Councillor Hogg's amendment is, that he sort of almost relies on a magic bunny tree. You can imagine a Labour Party group meeting where their committee decided what the amendment would be, and those who were for the environment claim mates take the claim on some environmental spending, those who were for the voluntary sector stake the claim for some voluntary sector money, and those who sort of were on the part of the friends of the unions stake some claim for something for the union members and so on. And that is how this budget, this, this, this amendment has come through. There, is, there are three financial figures in this amendment, and I'm, I'm thought most budgets will have more than that. So there's two million to be raised by investing with an aim to raise two million. I wish I'd go to my bank and say, I'd like to say money with the aim of earning 10,000 uh, pounds. I've got 20,000 pounds to put into the bank. I think I'd be shown the door. The idea that you can rely on your spending patterns for years to come on the basis of an expectation of an earning, no certainty of an earning, but an expectation of an earning seems to me to be daft. These are commitments of spending you'd make for years on year on year, and, and you'd, you'd rely on a, on a kind of whim that you might earn two million pounds a year. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, in the, the usual fine print in a financial document would say sometimes you may not. And, and of course, there is nothing in this amendment that suggests they have awareness about what happens when there isn't. The hundred new social affordable homes in the York Road in Stanley. I mean, I know the Council Hogg has taken deep and passionate interest in the regeneration scheme and I thank him for his support for what we have got there. I'm sure he studied the bid papers and he would know perfectly well that the financial appraisal on the bid is despite its location and despite our ambition and despite our own investment in it is also quite critically, so tightly balanced. Add another affordable hundred affordable homes and you don't know what might happen, it might topple over. There is no concern, no research to see whether that is a, 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 a deliverable promise or not. Just back to this committee uh, that designed this amendment. I'd like 100 please, that's my bid, okay stick it in. That's the kind of motion that they have come up with. Improved ch children's play, play facilities, of course quite right to, but is there a price tag to it? How much would it be uh, worth? Uh, what would it cost? How much would it cost to invest into to build? How much would it cost to run? No, no, no figures. And they call this a budget. They call this a budget based on some sort of responsibility, they claim. Listen, uh, I, I looked at three neighboring authorities and so the way they balance their books and uh, deal with their budgets. In case of um, uh, Merton next door, they do exactly what we do. They save money and they draw on reserves to balance their budget. They last year drew seven odd million pounds to balance their budget. This year they will draw just over 12 million pounds to, to balance the budget. Exactly the kind of things we do and exactly the kind of things the Councillor Carpenter thinks we shouldn't do. Look at Lambeth and Mer uh, Hammersmith film across the road. What they do is they hypothecate that the amount of savings they will deliver will be a lot more than they really can. They count the savings they want to say to deliver rather than the savings they have delivered in order to balance the budget. So what happens is that when the savings don't arise, they don't go into the reserves, but they just sort of car carry on with an overspend. This is not the responsible way of balancing budgets. This is not the conservative way of balancing budgets. This is not the way in which you deliver 500 million pounds in savings and pay for the pensioners today and tomorrow. This is not the way in which you have a 100% fully funded pension fund, unlike many authorities that they claim to have allegiances to. Mr. Mayor, several couple of council meetings ago, and, and since the party opposite has talked about being responsible, wanting to take control, willing to take control, able to take control, and all of that. Well, this budget shows that the people of Wandsworth would be very, very foolish to trust a party that actually cannot deliver an alternative budget, unlike a three-member conservative group in Lambeth, fully costed alternative budget. It may not be approvable, it may not be that, but a great effort goes into, in fact, saying 
that as a responsible opposition group, they genuinely have financial acumen to put an alternative budget together. Across the, across the chamber, a string of wish lists, half-costed items, and a hope that everything will be all right on the night. Well, it won't. Right, um, a recorded vote will now be taken on the amendment moved by Councillor Carpenter. The Chief Executive will call out each councillor's name in turn, and members should indicate whether they are for the amendment or against or abstaining. Councillor Ambash. For. Councillor Anderson. For. Councillor Belson. For. Councillor Caddy. Councillor Carpenter. For. Councillor Mrs. Clay. Councillor Cook. Councillor Mrs. Jane Cooper. Councillor Mrs. Leone Cooper. For. Councillor Cousins. For. Councillor Ms. Critchard. Councillor Crivelli. Councillor Daly. Councillor Dawson. Councillor Dickerton. Councillor Dodd. Councillor Mrs. Dunn. Councillor Ellis. Councillor Gibbons. Councillor Govindia. Councillor Mrs. Graham. Councillor Grinston. Councillor Mrs. Hampton. Councillor Heaster. Councillor Hogg. Councillor Humphreys. Councillor Johnson. Councillor Ms. Jones. Councillor Lescott. Councillor Lua. Councillor Ms. MacDonald. Councillor Madden. Councillor McCausland. Councillor Mrs. McDermott. Councillor MacDonald. Councillor McKinney. Councillor O'Brien. Councillor Osborne. Councillor Peterkin. Councillor Ryder. Councillor Salier. Councillor Senior. Councillor Speck. Councillor Stokes. Councillor Mrs. Strickland. Councillor Mrs. Sutters. Thank you. Councillor Sweet. Councillor Tom. Councillor Thomas. Councillor Ms. Torrington. Councillor Mrs. Tracy. Councillor Mrs. Usher. Councillor Walsh. Councillor White. Thank you. That is lost uh, 20, 22 32. Correct. Thank you. Now move on to a recorded vote will now be taken on the motion that the recommendation in paragraph 2A. So we start with a vote on section A. The same. So, so uh, Mr. Mayor, it might be just helpful just to clarify. I, I, I think you've indicated you. But first of all, you want a recorded vote on 2A, That's right. and then subsequently, uh, councillors will be invited for a recorded vote on B to H. So this is a recorded vote on paragraph 2A of the uh, of the original budget motion. Uh, please indicate for or against, Councillor Ambash. Councillor Anderson. Yes. Councillor Belton. Yes. Councillor Caddy. Yes. Councillor Carpenter. Councillor Mrs. Clay. Councillor Cook. Councillor Mrs. Jane Cooper. Councillor Mrs. Leone Cooper. Councillor Cousins. Councillor Ms. Critchard. Councillor Crivelli. Councillor Cuff. Sorry, Councillor Daly. Councillor Dawson. Councillor Dickerton. Councillor Dodd. Councillor Mrs. Dunn. Councillor Ellis. Councillor Gibbons, yes. Councillor Govindia, yes. Councillor Mrs. Graham, yes. Councillor Grimston, yes. Councillor Mrs. Hampton, yes. Councillor Heaster, yes. 
Councillor Hogg, Councillor Humphreys, Councillor M Martin Johnson, Councillors Jones, Councillor Lescott, Councillor Lua, Councillor Ms MacDonald, Councillor Madden, Councillor McCausland, Councillor Mrs McDermott, Councillor MacDonald, Councillor McKinney, Councillor O'Brien, Councillor Osborne, Councillor Peterkin, Councillor Ryder, Councillor Salier, Councillor Senior, Councillor Speck, Councillor Stokes, Councillor Mrs Strickland, Councillor Mrs Sutters, Councillor Sweet, Councillor Tom, Councillor Thomas, Councillor Mrs Torrington, Councillor Mrs Tracy, Councillor Mrs Usher, Councillor Walsh, Councillor White. Thank you. Carried 36.18. That is carried 36.18. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, now uh, the final recorded vote, which is on the remaining paragraphs B to H. Um, Councillor uh, Ambash. Councillor Ambash, B to. Councillor Ambash, uh, Councillor Anderson. Councillor Belton. Councillor Caddy, Councillor Carpenter, Councillor Mrs Clay, Councillor Cook, Councillor Mrs Jane Cooper, Councillor Mrs Leonie Cooper, Councillor Cousins, Councillor Ms Critchard, Councillor Crivelli, Councillor Daly, Councillor Dawson, Councillor Dickerton, Councillor Dobb, Councillor Mrs Dunn, Councillor Ellis, Councillor Gibbons, Councillor Govindia, Councillor Mrs Graham, Councillor Grimston, Councillor Mrs Hampton, Councillor Easter, Councillor Hogg, Councillor Humphreys, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Jones, Councillor Lescott, Councillor Lua, Councillor McDonald, Councillor Madden, Councillor McCausland, Councillor Mrs McDermott, Councillor McDonald, <laughs> Councillor McKinney, Councillor O'Brien, Councillor Osborne, Councillor Peterkin, Councillor Ryder, Councillor Salier, Councillor Senior, Councillor Speck, Councillor Stokes, Councillor Mrs Strickland, Councillor Mrs Sutters, Councillor Sweet, Councillor Tom, Councillor Thomas, Councillor Mrs Torrington, Councillor Mrs Tracy, Councillor Mrs Usher, Councillor Walsh, Councillor White. That's carried unanimously. That is carried unanimously. Thank you. Well